Hi everybody, this is just going to be a quick little video to give you a couple of extra examples to go in section 6.3, which is multiplying, dividing, and estimating with rational numbers. The first example that we're going to look at is from page 294 of your textbook. It's example 16. And it says, a bicycle is on sale at three-fourths of its original price. If the sale price is 330, what was the original price? So the key on a word problem is always to write down what you know in the form of an equation. And in order to do that, you need to assign a variable to the unknown, which in this case is the original price. That's what we're trying to find. So we're going to let the original price be represented by x. Now, it tells us that the sale price is three-fourths of the original price, and the sale price is $330. So 3 fourths times the original price is going to be $330. Let's write that equation. 3 fourths of the original price is 330. So now all we need to do is isolate the x, and we can do that by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of 3 fourths, because any fraction times its reciprocal is 1. So if I multiply the left side by 4 thirds, I'll have to also multiply the right side by 4 thirds. Now, I do want to caution you against one thing. A lot of times students will write this equation, and instead of multiplying both sides by the reciprocal like we did here, they'll say, all right, I'm going to eliminate this coefficient by dividing both sides by 3 fourths. This is not wrong, but students are going to get stuck here because it, especially in the elementary grades, students are not going to know how to handle this once they get it written. So again, it's not wrong to divide by 3 fourths, it's just that you can't mentally accomplish it this way. So we would not want to encourage writing it like this. Instead, we show that we are eliminating the coefficient by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. So what that's going to do is it's going to let us cross out the 4 that's in the top and the 4 that's in the bottom and the 3 that's in the top with the 3 that's in the bottom. So you can see that the coefficient now on the left side is x. And so what we have left is that x equals 330 times 4 divided by 3. Now again, students are going to be tempted to do this the hard way because the most direct way actually is not the easiest way. When students see this, they're going to want to multiply 330 times 4, but that's going to give a large number. So the key on a problem like this is not to multiply first, which gives us a large number that we have to divide by 3, but instead we want to simplify first. So we want to break down the 330 into 3 times 110. So 330 times 4 becomes 3 times 110 times 4 and we still have our divided by 3 in the denominator. And now you can see that these 3's will cancel, and that's going to leave us with x equals 110 times 4, so x equals $440. And now let's get a couple of examples of multiplication with mixed numbers. Anytime you have to multiply a mixed number times another mixed number, the key is to convert your mixed numbers to improper fraction form and then use your steps for multiplying fractions. So let's look at the example 4 and a half times 2 and 1 third. If you don't convert this to improper fraction form, you're going to have to do basically something similar to the FOIL method. You're going to have to say 4 times 2 plus 4 times 1 third plus 1 half times 2 plus 1 half times 1 third, and that's a lot of steps. It's much simpler to convert your mixed numbers to improper fraction form. So we know that to do that, we multiply the denominator times the whole number, and then we add the numerator. So by multiplying, we're finding out how many halves are in 4. Well, 2 times 4 is 8, so this 4 makes 8 halves plus the 1 half we already had is 9 halves. And then for 2 and 1 third, 3 times 2 is 6. So this 2 represents 6 thirds, and 6 thirds plus 1 third is 7 thirds. All right, now we're ready to do the multiplication. But instead of doing 9 times 7 over 2 times 3 and having these large numbers to work with, let's see what we can cross out top and bottom. Let's see what factors we'll divide out. We know that we can write 9 as 3 times 3. 
So let's write 9 over 2 as 3 times 3 over 2. And the 7 and the 3 are both prime, so we can't change anything there. And now this 3 in the top divided by this 3 in the bottom is going to make a 1. So we'll just cross out those like factors, and we're left with 3 times 7 for the top number and 2 times 1 for the bottom number. So we have 21 over 2. Now this is the answer, but it's not in the final form that we need it in. This was a mixed number problem. So if the answer is an improper fraction, we need to convert it to mixed number form. So 2 goes into 21 10 times with 1 left over. So 21 halves becomes 10 and 1 half. And the thing to remember at the end of any fraction problem when you're trying to decide if you need to convert to mixed number form or not is if the problem was a mixed number problem, then any improper answers should be converted to mixed number form. If the problem is not a mixed number problem, then an improper answer is okay. Now, if you're multiplying a mixed number times an integer, you may not necessarily need to convert that mixed number to an improper form. You still can, but that may not be the easiest way to approach a problem like this. So this one says multiply mentally 9 and 1 fifth times 10. So since the 10 is a whole number, instead of converting this to improper form, it's actually easier to just multiply 10 times each piece. So we are going to think of 9 and 1 fifth times 10 as 9 plus 1 fifth times 10. And I think that will make it a little easier for you to see what's happening here. All we have to do now is distribute the 10. So 10 times 9 is 90, and 10 times 1 fifth is 10 fifths. Now 10 fifths we know simplifies to 2. So now we have 90 plus 2, which is 92. And I think you'll agree that evaluating the problem this way was a little easier than it would have been to make an improper fraction here, multiply by 10, and then convert back to mixed number form. So anytime you're multiplying by a whole number instead of another mixed number, you can take advantage of this method. And that's all I've got for you in this video, so I hope that was helpful, and good luck.